On the same day that Boris Johnson talked about levelling up the country, his government implemented the biggest cut to benefits in a generation. At midnight on Tuesday, the cut to universal credit came into effect. It means that 4.4 million households will lose an average of £1,000 per year. For 1 million households, the cut will represent a 10% loss of income. The cut will leave the base rate of benefits at their lowest level since 1990. This is a really bad thing, and for millions of people in Britain, it will cause a hell of a lot of pain. Not for the people implementing it, though. And last night at Tory party conference, just an hour after that cut went through, the cabinet minister in charge of universal credit was having the time of her life. That was Therese Coffey, the, sh the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. It's her direct responsibility, the benefits that people receive. It's her department which will be cutting £20 a week to 4.4 million households, which we're told um, by, by NGOs and charities will push 290,000 children below the poverty line. While that's happening, while that cut is going into effect, Therese Coffey is singing that she's having the time of her life at Tory party conference. Dahlia, this, this cut to universal credit, I think, is, is where Boris Johnson quite rightly is most vulnerable. He's up there saying, I'm going to put more money in your pockets. And there are 4.4 million households who are, after today, £20 a week poorer. That's £1,000 a year, £80 a month. These are really significant sums of money. And the Tories just seem to be pushing through with it. We also know that this is really hitting people in, in red wall seats, seats that the Conservatives are supposed to care about. So I, I wonder why they seem to be so willing to go ahead with this. I mean, that clip is pretty sickening to watch. And it, to me, it's, it's capitalism in a sort of nutshell. And it, it's difficult to watch, but also at least it's honest. I mean, this is how our political system and how our economy has been run especially for the past 10 years, but also further back than that, of people treating decisions that, taking decisions that are going to have immense consequences on people's lives. You know, how many times do we have to hear stories of people literally starving to death in Britain because they're not able to, you know, pass a means test in order to get access to their universal credit? And then when they do get access to universal credit, it's made basically impossible to live on. And those decisions are being taken so lightly that the people who take them and who announce them are able to push it to the back of their mind and, and, have, and have a great time and have a great party on the same day as they announce something that will destroy the lives of so many people. And it also speaks to the fact that we don't see accountability from the media. If you think about the response when Angela Rayner called Tories scum, and the uh, pleas of decorum, the pearl clutching that took place. You know, I'm no particular fan of Angela Rayner, but, you know, clearly it, it, the, that was used as an excuse to kind of talk about the lack of decorum and the lack of professionalism of, of Angela Rayner. And, you know, that was in no part related to probably the fact that she is, you know, a northern woman from working class roots. And yet this, this very real disregard for, for people's livelihoods and the, the lightness and the frivolity with, with which these kinds of decisions are taken is sort of left without much interrogation by, by the mainstream media. And so this is why Boris Johnson is able to convincingly make the Tories sound like they are the party of putting money in the pockets of working class people, despite A, the slash on universal credit or the, the refusal to keep on the 20 pound addition, uh, but also in terms of, you know, the national insurance tax hike, uh, which, as we talked about in previous shows, disproportionately is impacting lower middle class and working class people. So the fact that, that, that Boris is able to and the Conservative Party are able to credibly promote themselves as this party, even though, as you outlined before, their policies are in no way helpful to putting money into working class people's pockets, putting money into the pockets of people who need them. It's because these parts of the story, such as, you know, 
the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions dancing and singing karaoke after she slashed the budgets of so many working class people. That is not that part of the story is not questioned and is not highlighted in the way that it really needs to be.